of DFT-154 software applications. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at a practical application of creating PowerPoint slides to supplement a presentation on a design overview. And what we're going to do is we are going to use our caster assembly that we made in the first quarter as our example design. So this is what the tutorial is going to look like. First, we are going to set up PowerPoint to have the appropriate background that we would like. And then we will add content, which is text and images. And then we'll add any necessary, any necessary animations that, that we might use to create contrast or size to, to enhance our presentation. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to get started. Make sure, make, make sure you can see my mouse, that you, have, that you have eyes on my mouse. This would be an important thing. And the first thing we are going to do is start up PowerPoint. So if PowerPoint isn't on your desktop or it, it's not in the, re, in the recents list here, you can just type it in PowerPoint. There we go. Here's my PowerPoint. I'm going to get started. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a blank presentation. You can choose any one of these templates if you like, but for this tutorial, we are going to use a blank presentation. So I just left click on that and I start out with one slide. I start out with one slide. So as I'm planning out my presentation, I figure out I will need one to two slides. I'll probably need a title slide that is going to just quickly summarize uh, or that is that is quickly going to let the audience know what the presentation is about and then I'll have a content slide that is used to walk my audience through the presentation so if we remember the David Phillips video that we watched on the first day of class one one of the big things with PowerPoint is to have a dark background so that it's easy on the eyes. If, if the PowerPoint slides have more contrast than you, all the audience's eyes are going to be stuck, actually more like glued to the PowerPoint rather than you. But what we want is, what we want is the audience to be focused on us. The PowerPoint is supposed to point to us. All right. <coughs> so. How do we change our background to, to a dark background? Well, there's a couple of different ways. We can go to the Design tab, and we can choose a predefined theme. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Format Background because I'm a pretty simple guy, okay? I just want one color. So I, I'm going to click Format Background, and here I can adjust the fill of my background. So I have solid fill set up because it's nice and simple. Then I'm going to choose black. And there I have black. So I can close out of this format background. Now there is a slight problem. My text is still black. So how I'm going to change my text color is I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm going to go to this icon right here and I will choose white or some other light color so that my text is light. So I'm an all caps guy and this is a technical presentation so I'm going to do all caps caster as assembly overview. Now this text box I'm not going to use I'm going to delete that and I can left click on the text box. I can resize the text box however I want. I'm just going to fit it up here. And maybe I'll put it over here. Maybe I want to, to italicize my text. Whoops. Let me try that again. If you highlight an automatic quick startup 
or an auto, an automatic quick dialog box pops up, I can say, "Aha, italicized." Italicized is also up here. Fancy words which don't have an effect on a on a black background here. Uh, and say I don't want it to be white. Say I want it to be a less contrasting color. Yeah, light gray. Okay. So to add another slide, I can e I can either choose new slide up here. If I choose the top portion of the button, it will produce a slide that has the same formatting as the one that I start out with. I could also choose one of these templates. For my next slide, I want content and a picture. So I'm going to go I'm going to go with looks like either one of these uh, here picture with content and look at that I have a white background well do I really want to reset my my background I can if, if I want that that's not a big deal I'll just go to design tab format background and say black again now say I didn't want to, say I just wanted to duplicate the last slide, I, I can press Control duplicate or I can right click and say duplicate slide. Easy peasy. Okay, so I'm going to add some text here. Whoops, it's black again. So I'll go to the home tab and make my text I'll make it dark gray again. Caster assembly. And since this is my header, I don't want it as big as my content. And I actually think I want my content over here on the right. So I just left click and drag. And then I'll pull my picture over here. Resize it. Boom. So I can align my content. You see those grid lines? Those red grid lines? I can align text boxes either with the median or with already existing content on the page. If I wanted further precision, I could go to view, the view tab in the, in the ribbon. And I can say, show me the ruler show me grid lines please and give me some guides so the guides are two crosshairs right down the middle I just flash that so you can see it now I can a lot I, I can use the grid and align with one of these to place things this is how this is helpful for for if I want a little more precision. So for my next trick, I actually don't want to show these grid lines and guides. It's a little distracting for me. So for my next trick, I'm going to enter in the components of my caster assembly, which are and I'm actually going to make this straight white because I want this to pop. Wheel, what What else do I have? Shaft, um, retaining ring, bushing, bracket, and post. Now that's a little small, that's not gonna work, huh? So if I wanna make it bigger, I can highlight it. And I'll also do a center justification. And I'm gonna bring this way up. I'm all the way up. <laughs> Alright. I didn't lose anything, did I? Okay. So, i also bold this out. I want this to really pop. And I'll make my header now smaller.
All right. So the next thing we'll do is we will add a picture. We'll add a picture of our caster assembly. Now, a picture of our caster assembly, we have a couple of, of different forms of it. We have it in AutoCAD, we have it in a PDF, we have it in a drawing file, but we have a black background, okay? So what we want to do is we want to match the background of our photo to the background of, of our PowerPoint. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we will open up AutoCAD, we'll, we'll open up our caster assembly, and our... Our background in model space might be white, it might be like a darkish grayish, but we want it black. So how you do that is you go up to the applications icon, and then you go to options. And then I'm going to be on the display tab, and it's not going to be here, it's going to be in colors. Okay, so then over here where it says color we have the uniform background selected so we can say black please and hit apply and close I'll apply again now I have a black background perfect huh absolutely perfect I'm gonna slide this out, out of the way a little bit and I'll put it right there I'm gonna go to a southwest isometric zoom in as much as I can and then I'm gonna use the snipping tool we all remember the snipping tool right I'm flashing it right now on the screen snipping tool go to new and then I can snip snippy snip snip alright and I'm gonna get my snip of my caster assembly and then I can save it And I will save it, yeah. And it's caster assembly image for my example. Because this is an example tutorial. Right, so I got that saved. I can go back to PowerPoint. What I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna click on this little pictures icon here. It's right in the mid it's right in the middle of my content. I'm click on that. And then, where am I? I saved that on my flash drive, so I'm going to navigate to it. Okay. There's my picture. Uh oh, it's not exactly sized to how I want it. So, how you can fix that is you can go to crop and you can say fit. There you go. And you can even bring this up a little bit to get a bet to get a better fit. There we go. Huzzah! Let's add this picture again to our front page. So I'm just gonna right click and copy. Whoops, copy. Go back to the front page and I want to do a picture yep and I'll put it right about there alright looks like we got something going now this first slide is all is alright this first slide is alright but this slide, it's a little bit overwhelming. My eyes are falling into the content. My eyes are falling into the content right here, but there's a little bit too much content. Um, David Phillips from our video, his rule was no more than six items. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is kind of a lot. Um, I don't want to split this up, so, I'm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use contrast to make it seem like there's less objects on the page okay so how I'm going to do that is with animations and who can guess where the animations tab or where an animations are 
you can look around and just find it on, on your screen in about a couple of seconds. Uh, it's in the ribbon. There it is, animations. So click on that. And you notice er everything's grayed out except the animation pane. But when you select something, like say I, just, I want to so select this wheel text, I get options. So what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to do anything fancy because I don't want the PowerPoint slide to distract away from me. So I'm going to do a simple appear. And you see a one pops up here. Oh, a one pops up here. What that means is that this is going to appear onto the screen. Now, I, I don't have a whole lot of options here, but if I go to the an, an, animation pane, I can get some options. I can see all the animations that are on this specific slide. So, if I right click on this, by default it says start on click, so once so once I click or once I press enter on my keyboard, wheel will will appear. So I'm I'm gonna select the rest of this content and then add an appear animation to that too. Now watch closely what happens when I select multiple things at once. They all have a two next to them. That means if I was to preview this actually let, let's just preview it now so wheel pops up first but then all of my content that I selected pops up at the same time which is not what, what, what I want so how I can get them to go in order is I can right click on each one uh, actually what I can do is I can say start on click for all of these. Start on click, down arrow, start on click, down arrow, start on click. So now if I now if I pre now if I preview this, which by which by the way, if you want to preview your, your slideshow, you go to the slideshow tab in the ribbon and say you can preview either from the beginning, which brings me to the beginning or you can preview from current slide. So now they all come on um, sequentially with clicks or pressing enter on the keyboard. Now what I want to do is I want to make it seem I want to make it seem like there's not as much content and I also want to make the audience's eyes follow me as I'm going through the presentation. So what I want to do is I want to dim I want to dim each each text app after it's been animated. So let's see how to do that. It's actually very simple. So if I go up to wheel for a for a for example, I can right click on it and I can go to effect options. And notice this this after animation area it, it it by default says don't dim but I can I can assign a dim color to be applied to the text after the animation has taken place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find a dark gray I think that's pretty good right there so I want it to dim to this dark gray after the an, an animation so let's see what that looks like. So, bam. Oh, it dims. You know, and I might e even want that to be a little darker, but for now, that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that that operation, that, that dim to each one of these text options. So for shaft, I will go to effect options, and then I can click my dark gray. It's in the recent colors area. I can just click it and I get a little preview and I can do that for each one. And 
and we're just moving along, moving along, moving along. Oh, so we act, we act, we actually don't even need to do the last one. And actually, I'll use my mess up as a demonstration. So. I, I assigned a dimming effect after the last animation. See what happens. So I'm going through. And my last click actually dims the post. Which I actually don't want to do that. I would like it after I'm done talking about the post. I would like to finish the slideshow. So how I can make that happen is I cannot dim the last option. So I'm going to say don't dim for the for the last an animation. So now if I preview from current slide, I get a nice contrast that that is that is helping the audience follow me in this design overview presentation. When you're done, you can upload it and you can also talk to your peers. You can talk to your peers about about any changes you might make to make this presentation to make this presentation more dynamic what you would do to these slides to make them better point to the presenter or to make them to make them a better supplement to a design overview presentation maybe you have an idea on doing a different theme that might be more interesting Talk to your peers and and um, get some get get some feedback from them to try and make the best PowerPoint supplement to a design overview presentation that you can, and then you can submit your your best impression of how PowerPoint should how how PowerPoint should supplement a design presentation. And that concludes our tutorial.